morning, everyone, and welcome to our live devotional. It is uh, Friday, August 28th, I believe. Wow, the month has really flown by. At least for me, it has. I feel like it's just been going. Um, I want to uh, mention a couple of things that you're going to notice. There's uh, kind of a, a fan going in the background. I forgot to shut that off, and uh, I don't want to waste your time with that. And the lighting's a little orange. But uh, hopefully everything's clear. You can see me okay. You can hear me okay. Uh, good morning. It's just wonderful to have you all here. So um, I'm going to open in prayer, and then we're going to get to our uh, talk and a song today. So let's start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that uh, you're here with us wherever we are and that uh, you're reaching through the video into uh, our homes and our, in our lives and you're speaking to us, you're ministering to us. Lord, I pray that I get out of the way and you step forward and you be the, uh, the clearest voice uh, through this whole conversation, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. It's good to have him at the center, amen. And that's the idea today. So I'm going to sing a song. Um, I don't think it's on our uh, regular official list, maybe not even anymore. It's called I Surrender. We've done it a few times. Uh, I remember doing it in uh, our my first worship and prayer night that we did as a church family. And uh, I just think it, it fits really, really well, um, talking about surrendering to the Lord. So if it's new to you, sorry about that. Um, I do kind of take liberty uh, in the... Uh, devotional time to play songs that uh, I feel really fit well, even if it's not in our usual rotation. So if you haven't heard it before, hopefully you like it. I think it's a beautiful song. It goes like this.
song about surrender, a song about giving everything to him. So today, uh, I want to talk about one of the spiritual disciplines. And we talk about them often, actually, when we get together. Uh, we've talked about scripture reading. We talked about prayer and solitude. Um, it was a toss-up. I wanted to maybe talk about fasting today. But one thing that I think is really important is let's talk about something called submission and servitude. Submission and servitude come up a lot in scripture, and I just want to start off with uh, understanding the verses. Submission versus servitude, uh, and I'm going to take some of this uh, from the curriculum that uh, I wrote and put together uh, called the Spiritual Formation Class. So if you've taken that class, you maybe have heard some of this before. And if you are in the class and it's been a pile of months since we've gotten together and you're curious as to where things go, this is a chunk of that. This is an important piece. One of our spiritual disciplines, which means something we do, kind of like exercising, right? You diet, you work out, you uh, take care of your physical body, your spiritual body needs to be taken care of. And this is one of those things we do, is we practice submission and servitude. So that's what a spiritual discipline is. And I want you... To, I want you to know that the Bible talks about slavery and it talks about having slaves and slaves working with masters. We're going to get to that right away. And when I read that, the first thing I want you to understand, because I think it's just important to point out, is that in the time that it was written, right, um, the part I'm going to read is written by Peter, uh, one of the apostles. He was one of the disciples with Christ. There is no way during that cultural time, they would have understood a world without slavery. And in case you're completely lost and don't understand the global climate, this world has a lot of slavery in it, right? We've definitely stood up for rights and did a lot of great things within uh, North America, but the world itself, and even still in North America, there is some issues with slavery and with um, owning people and human trafficking and a pile of things that a lot of this can fall into. So don't get me wrong. There is a wrongness to uh, slavery. But when they write about it, they write about it in, in a context where they never thought of a world without slaves and owners and masters and you know field workers and all that stuff back then. They just didn't see a world without it. So that's why there's a context of talking about slaves and how they treat their masters. It's in here. Um, it's a really good lesson to note then when reading scripture, if you see something that's culturally weird or off-putting, uh, could even be something that feels like sexism and uh, all of that, Note that they didn't know any better in their culture and that being progressive and finding a healthy way to treat all humans equal is actually where we should be going. Don't use the scriptures to come up with your own prejudice agenda. Okay? Just making sure that we're there. So, this is where we're going to start is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18. And it says this, Slaves, talking to slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. Okay, so Peter writes the scripture to the servants of the day and saying that they should be living in submissiveness. They should be submissive to their masters. Now, servants are not in the habit of the time to not do the work. 
They're not in the habit to defy the orders of their masters, right? But there is a difference. Serving is something they just do. But being submissive is an attitude, and it is completely different than serving. So whether you're forced upon it by an oppressive leader or you're persuaded out of guilt or you're happy to share and serve with someone, we need to be people that take this understanding of submissiveness uh, to heart. We need to look at those in authority over us. We need to look at those um, around us and we say, God has called us to actually be in a state of submission, right? To raise those up around us. Um, there's no authority that we should be wielding in order to push people down. We should never be manipulative with our authority. We shouldn't be harsh with our authority. We should not be um, aggressive in pushing or misusing our authority in any way. So that's that side. But then the serving side is perfect. We should just be submissive, right? We need to be people that love equally those around us. And one of the best ways to do that is to be a pillar. Get right underneath someone in leadership and hold them up, sturdy and strong, serving with that submissive heart. And it's a really big deal. Now, pastors get to learn this early in life because we cannot lead a church. We cannot lead a body of Christ without understanding what it means to work in the trenches, to uh, work with followers, to show them how it's done, and to uplift the church. The body of Christ is built in such a way that the leadership, which some people I know can think is an overarching governing uh, body or something that oppresses, it makes no sense, a, a leadership team, that being what a board of directors does, that being what pastors do, their primary goal is to be under the church, holding them up and making sure that the body, the people, the in and out everyday people of the church got what they need to serve the Lord and to share the love of Jesus, that they're hearing from God, that they are ready to do the work that scripture has pointed out, right? So submission should be demonstrated by your leadership in whatever local church you attend. If it's not, that's a conversation to have with your leaders. <laughs> but that's the idea. That's the point. So we understand that. But then you, church, body of Christ, that is seeing this, hopefully by example, you then too should be doing the same thing. You do it in your workplace. You got a boss that's kind of rude? Well, you can tell them clearly. I think it's important that you communicate to people around you. Communication's key in all relationships, workplace, um, uh, romantic relationships and, and uh, all of it, but serve them well, submit, do your duty well. I worked in a job, um, one of my first jobs, I was, uh, they actually titled it aquatic technician. I was the quote unquote dish pig at a restaurant. And I don't know why my title was, actually I do know why my title was aquatic technician. They made me clean everything. If water was involved, it was my job. So uh, that was the thing. Uh, but ultimately, I was treated really poorly. Adam's boss is really nice. Yeah. Thanks, Pastor Brent. Um, he is nice. Wouldn't be here if you weren't. Uh, <laughs> but the idea is that we... we I worked in this place where people were actually really kind of harsh at times. And one of the jobs I had to do is clean out all the grout in the floor of this tiled floor with a toothbrush. It wasn't my toothbrush, but it was a toothbrush and it took me hours. I scrubbed the grout clean and I could have grumbled. I could have fought. You're welcome. Thanks. I could have fought. I could have uh, thrown the toothbrush on my boss's face and said, no way. But instead, I decided to do something differently. I decided to communicate that this was ridiculous, that it was not appropriate, that it did not need to happen. But in doing so, because they were not around, they left. I, my boss anyway, 
I cleaned the whole thing so that it was immaculate. I proved that I had a skill and ability to serve well and to submit to authority, but I made sure that they understood that I did not see it as appropriate and that communication would need to be clearer next time they want me to do something so ridiculous. And, you know, I could I don't want to toot my own horn. That was something that took a lot of patience and preparation and consideration because that's a ridiculous thing to do. I also did some things out of fear. I'm young. It was my first job, and I wasn't sure if I could have refused work. I've since then, in other positions and jobs in my life, refused unsafe work, which we have a right to do, and I think that's something that we all should be mindful of in case those things come up. Um, this wasn't necessarily unsafe. It was just ridiculous. And uh, anyway, so there was a, a lesson for me in being submissive. And, you know, my dad taught me to do a job well, no matter what. Always do it well. Pastor Dale's kid used my church toothbrush to clean my toilet, and I never used it later in my mouth. Yeah. Eh. Oh, you did use it later. This is a horrible story. That's much worse than mine. That's not submissive. That's just sad. Um, gross. I got to say. Things happen in the workplace that's just a little odd. Don't keep a toothbrush in a work bathroom, maybe, Pastor Brent. I wouldn't do that. But I wanted to kind of touch base on the idea of submitting to authority and what it looks like. So here's the thing. Um, Colossians 3.22. It says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you uh, and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence of the Lord. God has created us to do that pillar thing really well. God has created us and made us to be people that hold each other up. And I encourage you to do that. When you do that, you sense blessing in your life you did not know was there. When you serve well, when you care for one another, not for your own... Um, you know, your, your, your own, uh, what am I trying to say? Not for your own glory. You're not trying to put your name out there. You're not trying to get fame and fortune out of this. You're serving people because it's in your nature. It's how God created you to love one another. And love is an action word. So I think that's important. We need to remember that. Uh, Richard Foster has a quote. It says this, We have entered into a new, wonderful, glorious freedom, the freedom to give up our own rights for the good of others. For the first time, we can love unconditionally. We have given up the right to demand that they return our love. We don't need something from them around us. We need to just love and care for those around us. Don't look for recognition. Look to serve well. So, submission's that attitude. Serving is the action. And, you know, is serving difficult? This is a question that's come up. I, I was uh, ministering with a friend at uh, a local teen challenge, and, uh, you know, the boys that are there are going through a lot of stuff, transformative, and they're asking, is it hard to be a Christian? right? Sounds hard. I came from a life without it. So what, you know, is it hard to be a Christian? And here's the answer that I hope that you also have. No, it is not difficult to be a Christian. Uh, Matthew 11, 29 to 30. You, you know, I love the scripture. It says, take my yoke upon you, Jesus is speaking, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. There's something we carry. There's something we do. But it's not a difficult life. It's, it's not a life of great, horrible pain and suffering to serve God. When he asks you to do something, he gives you the tools to do it. Um, often we rely on him and we lean on him and we cannot do it alone. I think when we're called to do something and we try to do it alone, that's when things get difficult. But we are called to do a life that is what it was always meant to be. You were created for the submissive servitude life. And if you're not doing that, I find you're going to have a more difficult time. 
compared to when you are. So no, serving Jesus and serving others is not difficult. It's not supposed to be difficult. It's what we're meant to do. Um, what about persecution? You said you're not supposed to suffer and whatnot. Okay, persecution will come to Christianity. Basically, persecution in its most simplest form is being... Um, it's, it's when something happens to you or stops you or you're recognized in a different way because of you're doing the right thing. Okay? If you're doing the right thing and someone is viewing you or treating you differently or badly. Okay? And you get the extreme cases when Christians are jailed and tortured and whatnot, which we hear all over the globe. But uh, sometimes people just treating you differently, like you don't get the hours you want. Maybe uh, you're always scheduled on Sundays. You can't go to church anymore. And you're annoyed, like you put in for Sundays, you know, isn't it? You're right. You, you want to go to church and you get all this stuff pushed back at you. That's a form of persecution. It really is. And I, I believe that. Um, it's just, it's not the same as some of the other stuff that we talk about, but it is persecution. So we're going to find that as Christians. People are not going to treat us like everybody else. Uh, in this world, especially if they're against Christianity or they've been hurt by someone in the church, uh, then that'll come your way. So persecution does happen, but serving others is still what you're meant to do, and it's not necessarily difficult. Does that make sense? Now, this is important, and it's one of the last things I'll talk about before I close. I know the weather's been off and on, and I don't want uh, some sort of power outage from the storm, uh, which I think has subsided, but it keeps coming and going. Uh, anyways, to cut our thing short. But I want you to know that you, church, you, body of Christ, and even if I can be so specifically to talk to you, local church, so Essex Gospel or whatever local church that you attend, you are right now in a special place where you can start serving the world around you in a submissive, healthy way. You can really look through a healthy lens of what persecution is and say, am I being targeted um, as a Christian uh, with some of these regulations? And I would say you are not. Every human being across the world is under the same regulations. So... I want you to have a healthy mindset about that. Um, this is not some new world order taking over the church. Um, it just doesn't seem that way at all. And I want you to start looking at your life in light of how you're serving, what your heart is saying about the world around you, what your heart is saying about your church, what your heart is saying about the town that you live in, about your government and province. I just... Right now, these days, we're seeing a lot of clash of authorities. We're seeing a lot of um, back and forth, and it's really polarizing what people feel and think right now, especially with the current pandemic and the regulations that have come up, but also with how they're treating other people. Um, if I can go way back, let's start at the beginning. Love one another. Love one another unconditionally without needing to receive love back just start there love one another once you've done that now take a step and say okay now how do i submit to one another how do i serve my community and people well how do i love submit and serve when you start walking that path step by step you're not going to be looking at anything else to the left or to the right that's distracting you you're going to move forward with the purpose that god has for your life so that's what that's really a message that I want to throw in there because I think it's timely. I think it's important. Let's be people who start by loving one another and then move forward and start saying, I'm going to unconditionally and truly submit to those around me and I'm going to serve them well. God gives great blessing to those who serve well. And I pray that you are filled with an abundance, a blessing, of encouragement, of everything in your life. God wants your purpose to just well up within you and be used. Your potential not to be worn out and lost, but to be used. Church, I pray that this message reaches you and finds you well. That we are people who 
again, not distracted by the sidelines, what people are saying and what's going on, but we do things well, we serve well, we submit well, and God will bless us. God will use us for his glory. And I'm excited for that. I'm glad to be part of that with you. So church, uh, let me pray for you one last time before I go. And uh, I'm sure Pastor Brent will tell you more weird stories um, another time when we're together. Uh, but yeah, let's let's pray. And I'm just joking about the comment section. So if you're watching this on YouTube later, you may not know what I'm talking about. Anyways, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for everything that you do in our lives, that you teach us and you've placed in our spirit the ability to submit and serve well. Let us recognize persecution when it comes and react to it properly with your anointing and word, Lord, but also let us be people that still understand the importance and the discipline that strengthens our spirit by submitting and serving in your name. So God, use us as your representatives in this world and allow us not to falter, but to do that well. Your blessing comes in great amounts when we do these things. God, I thank you. Touch every life, everyone who's watching, family and friends, and let us lean on you through some hard times because you're the one that gives us the strength and the tools to serve well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, oh, Pastor Brent has so many stories. I'm sure he does, and I'm excited to hear more. So I pray that this has touched your heart, that it's got you thinking. I think that's important. Thinking's good. And uh, we will talk more about uh, topics like spiritual disciplines again soon. But I think this was a good one for today. So take care and God bless. We'll see you Sunday. Bye.